Southern Yankee DIY. I'm Leah and I'm so glad to have you here today. I'm super excited because today we're starting a little bit of Halloween projects. I just couldn't help myself. I'm so excited about Halloween this year because finally I have a little one old enough to trick or treat. And you know what that means, candy for mama. So today I'm gonna show you how to make your very own trick or treat bags with a little matching t-shirt. This is a super simple applique project and it's my very first one. So if I can do it, y'all can do it. This is going to be so much fun and I'm also going to show you how to make some DIY Dollar Tree candy jars because you can't have trick or treat bags without a little bit of candy. Plus, I am teaming up with some of my favorite blogger friends and they are going to share with you their Halloween projects. So I'll go ahead and link them all below in the comments. Be sure to check them out and tell them that we sent you. And if you're not already subscribed to Southern Yankee DIY, go ahead and do that now because you don't want to miss out on any of our upcoming fall and Halloween DIY decor projects. All right, y'all, let's get started. All right, y'all, so this is my first applique project. For this, I'm going to use a heat and bond material, a canvas bag, some construction paper, and some pieces of fabric. The heat and bond is the part of this project that makes it possible to be a no-sew situation. And I cannot sew anything, so this is good news for me. The first thing you're gonna do is measure out your bag to see what size you want your image to be. I'm going to use my Cricut machine to cut out my image, but you could freehand it if that's your talent. It's just not mine. Next, I'm going to take my image that was cut out on the cardboard paper, construction paper, and cut out enough fabric to cover the image completely. I'm being pretty generous. I know you could just cut right along the lines, but um, for me, this fabric was like a buck for a little square, so it's not a big deal. Now that our fabric square is cut out, we're going to do the same thing with our heat and bond paper. We're gonna cut out a square that's the size of the fabric that we just cut out. Now that we have both of our pieces cut out, we're gonna go ahead and iron on our fabric onto the heat and bond. So you're going to iron on the wrong side of your fabric down onto the shiny rough side of the heat and bond. First, make sure that your piece of fabric is completely smooth and flat. So I went ahead and just used my iron to make sure that it was nice and flat and there was no wrinkles or crinkles. After my piece of fabric was all ironed and smoothed out, I went ahead and placed it wrong side down on top of the shiny rough part of the heat and bond. And I went ahead and ironed it on from the fabric side, and then afterwards I'm gonna flip it over and iron it on from the paper side of the heat and go. But um, I just feel like if you iron it on from the fabric side also, it helps to keep the fabric itself smoother. Once I applied heat to both sides, it was time to go ahead and trace out my image on top of the heat and bond paper side. I just outlined my pumpkin um, with my pencil. And you don't need to have an image to trace over. If your talent is drawing, then go ahead and freehand whatever design you would like to have. That's just not my talent, y'all. After I got my pumpkin all traced out, I went ahead and used my Cricut scissors to cut around the pumpkin. I use these scissors because they're my favorite, but use whatever fancy craft scissors that you have. Just make sure to rotate the pumpkin into the cut. That's the general rule when you're, when you're cutting anything that's in a circular or oval shape. That makes it go nice and smooth. This part needs to be pretty exact because this is exactly how your image will look. This is how the fabric will be cut out. So you don't wanna have any kind of loose ends of the fabric. You don't wanna be pulling at it and having any stringy ends. So after I finished this canvas bag and t-shirt, I found out that there is an easier way, y'all. If you have a Cricut, this whole process can literally take you 15 minutes. 
Um, but I want to do it this way for those who don't have a Cricut, then this is the best way to do it. And it really wasn't that long of a process. It's just a little tedious cutting out your image. But if you have a Cricut, I will go over exactly what you can do to make this process go super, super quick. Now that my pumpkin was all cut out, I went ahead and just applied heat again to the paper side of the heat and bond just to be extra sure that I have a good, good hold. We're gonna go ahead and let that cool down for a second. And while we're letting it cool, we're gonna go ahead and iron out our canvas bag, specifically where we want the image to go. We want the canvas bag to lay nice and flat and not have any kind of crinkles because that will mess up the transfer. Once our heat and bond image is all nice and cool, you can go ahead and peel it off just like a sticker. Basically, after you peel off the heat and bond, you'll be left with a shiny side. That's the side that's going to go ahead and lay down on your canvas or on your shirt. I just made sure that it was pretty center. You can use a measuring tape or however you want to. You can eyeball it if you want to. Um, just make sure that your image is where you want it. Right now you have a lot of play because there is no heat activation going on. So get it exactly where you want it because once that iron touches it, it's all over folks. Now you'll take your iron and just firmly press down and swipe over your fabric. This is the heat activation portion of it. This is what's going to bond your fabric onto your canvas bag or onto your t-shirt. And that's my first applique, yay! I'm so excited about this project. I feel like it's a real game changer, especially since I don't know how to sew. So now I can still utilize fabric in a different way. I'm super excited. So now we're gonna move on to the personalization portion of this project because I wanna have Eli's name on it. Y'all, I'm gonna even make a set for my niece and nephew because when a project's this simple, you can be a little extra. Plus, how cute is it gonna be when they all walk around Halloween day in their matching shirts and then trick or treat with their matching bags? Ooh, I just can't wait. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the letters. I'm gonna smooth out my fabric. This is what I'm going to cut his name out in. So I've got my little um, Cricut cut name here that I'm going to trace around later. I'm going to use it here just so I can know how big of a square I need to cut. Once my fabric square is cut, I'm going to make a matching square cut out of the heat and bond so that it can go right onto it. Now I did learn from experience that if you have any of the heat and bond sticking out over the top of the fabric, that will um, get really sticky and stick to whatever you're ironing on. So be very careful with that. And always remember when you're ironing on your fabric to the heat and bond that you wanna iron the wrong side down of the fabric onto the shiny rough part of the heat and bond. That's super important also. Now that my heat and bond is all cooled off, I'm gonna go ahead and trace out Eli's name onto the paper portion of the heat and bond. At this point, y'all, I had two thoughts. Number one, there has got to be an easier way. And number two, I am so happy I only named my child with three letters because this would have been a pain for more. And my niece and nephew, they have more. So I had to come up with a solution. So I did a little bit of research and found that if you have a Cricut machine, you can buy a special blade. They make two versions for the different Cricut machines. My version requires just the regular fabric blade, but if you have a newer Cricut, you can also get a rotary blade. So that's kind of cool. I immediately Amazoned it and it came the next day, y'all, and it is such a breeze. You're gonna see at the end, I'll show you how fast a Cricut fabric blade makes this project go. But if you don't have one, you can totally do it this way. It did take me um, a bit of time for the letters. Luckily, they were all pretty straight and nothing's too curvy. So I lucked out there. 
What felt like a million years later, I finally had all of my letters cut out. So now I went ahead and just made sure that they were nice and sticky onto the heating bond, applied a little bit more heat, just to make sure that there was a good hold there. And I peeled them back like a sticker and placed them on my pumpkin. I just set them up to be right in the center, no fancy math. I kind of just eyeballed it, honestly, y'all. Once I had the letters exactly where I wanted them, I went ahead and placed my heat on top of them and ironed them on. And I don't know if I mentioned before, but you definitely want to do a dry heat setting. No water should be going on this applique. No, I couldn't just stop with the trick-or-treat bags. I had to also make a matching shirt to go with it. I think that these shirts will be perfect for Halloween day, during the day, before they put on their costumes. Just something fun to wear to make it extra sweet. This process is the same for what we did when we made the canvas bag. You just take your fabric, cut out a slice that is large enough for your image, and then cut out the same size heat and bond. And we're just gonna follow the same exact steps. Now I'm going to show you in a second how quickly it is if you have the Cricut tool that I was talking about earlier. This process isn't crazy hard or anything like that, but you're going to be amazed at this Cricut tool. All right, y'all, now I'm gonna show you while I'm doing my little nephew's onesie how quick and easy the Cricut Fabric Cutter makes this job. We're going to go ahead and just cut out our piece of fabric and our piece of heat and bond just like we did for the other projects. After we have our two pieces cut out, we'll go ahead and apply heat the same way that we did with the other projects, except for this time, there will be no tracing. Once your two pieces are bonded together, go ahead and just place it on your Cricut cutting mat. I put mine fabric side up and this is the um, decals I used. Then the Cricut machine just went to work. I didn't have to do any kind of tracing or any kind of cutting and it worked out perfectly. I just applied it the same exact way as you would um, with the other projects, making sure that that shiny side is down and just smoothing it on to the onesie with the iron. The Cricut Fabric Cutter really did an excellent job on the letters and I'm so glad I had it because their names are a little bit longer than Eli's. The Cricut Cutter was so exact and perfect, it made this project just such a breeze. But the other way is great too. So at least now you know you can do it both ways. Y'all, look how cute these turned out. I cannot wait till they wear them Halloween day. Now let's move on to our next project some Dollar Tree DIY candy holders because you can't have trick or treat bags without some cute candy holders. I'm simply using these um, little set of pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree and also some of their little plastic jars. I'm gonna go with three different colors um, just to mix it up a little bit. I've got a gold color, a orange color, and then a rusty color that I think is gonna be my fall theme this year. I sprayed each pumpkin and each lid so that they would be matching. One pro tip is to leave the pumpkins on their little picks or you could put them on toothpicks. That'll make spray painting them much easier and then you can get all around the edges. After everything was dry, I went and took my pumpkins and my lids and simply added a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of the pumpkins. Then I placed them on the center of each of my lids. And that's a wrap. I hope y'all love these little Halloween projects. I cannot wait to get their t-shirts on them for Halloween. And these cute little candy jars are perfect for gifts, trick-or-treaters, or just to have around your own house. 
Don't forget to check out my amazing friends. I will go ahead and link their projects below. I know you're going to absolutely love them. So be sure to check them out and tell them that we sent you. I hope y'all have a great day and a happy Halloween.